Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Derek Tan. I'm a Singaporean and uh, I'm uh, very uh, privileged to be here today in uh, Kan Yin uh, publication to share with you guys uh, some of my view about the global market, especially heading into 2020, which I think is going to be uh, very confusing for a lot of people. All right? So, but uh, before I begin, uh, probably let me just uh, introduce a bit of myself. We can look at the screen over here. Uh, like what I mentioned, my name is Derek Tan, and uh, I'm very fortunate. Last year, I was actually awarded the Xuan Xiu Jie Su Qing Nian Ling Xiu, that means the World Excellent Young Leader Award 2019 by the Yangzhou Zhou Kan. All right? So then for me, I'm the founder and the CEO of uh, Timing and You Private Limited. And uh, I, I've been in the financial industry for, this will be my 21st year, all right? So uh, in the financial industry, so actually I know quite a fair bit about stock market, bond market, currency market, commodity markets, uh, even property markets, all right? So for me, actually I'm uh, also known as uh, Mr. Cycle and Cycle Engineer. Uh, why? Because uh, for me, actually I specialize in this form of market analysis called Cycle Analysis which is actually a field of studying and analyzing recurring pattern uh, and periodic repetition, whereby I can actually do forecasts of timing and turning point of different asset classes. All right? So I'll give you an example. Uh, this was in, uh, on the September 26, 2016. Actually, uh, this was my interview in The Age, and I forecasted that down zone is going to hit 30,000. All right? So let's take a look. Uh, just concentrate on the red circle over there. That was uh, that when my interview actually came out. Uh, down zone was about 18,000 then. So as of last night, down zone is 29,300. So we are almost in the fourth year and I need about 700 points to hit my KPI of 30,000. Alright, so why am I able to do this? I'm not here to impress you but to impress upon you guys that actually financial market it can be forecasted and how can we do forecast is by using this method called cycle analysis I believe a lot of people out there a lot of analysts or even trainers out there they are they teach or uh, uh, technical analysis or what we call TA or we, that means they look at charts or they look at fundamental analysis or FA of course made known by Warren Buffett uh, but for me, is uh, I know both TA, TA and FA, but for me, is I also uh, went US and Europe to learn about this cycle analysis and I brought it back to this region. So I would say I'm one of the few trainers who teach about uh, CA uh, in this region. And because of CA or cycle analysis, I'm able to do forecasts like this, uh, down zone uh, 30,000 and yeah, since 18,000 until last night, uh, Dow Zone has been up by 62%. So whoever follow my call, probably you are make, uh, laughing all the way to the bank. All right. So, and uh, I, I want to say this. This is a very popular book. If you go into any bookstore, it's called, the title is actually called a Random Walk Down Wall Street. All right. Uh, sorry to say this. I don't believe in random walk. Uh, because in financial market, there are hidden orders. It's just that, probably a lot of people, they don't have the time or the expertise how to so-called uncode all these hidden orders. So once you're able to uh, decode these uh, hidden orders, then you'll be able to do forecasts, you'll know what's going to happen. So it's not really a random walk to me, all right? So now, uh, for me, is uh, I've been giving talk uh, basically around the whole region, like uh, I give talk for AIA. Uh, very fortunately, I also give talk in Busa, Malaysia for Security Commission as well. I give talk for different banks uh, like CNBC, Kananga, uh, Afin Wong, M Bank, all this. And uh, I give talk in countries like China, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Myanmar, all this. All right? And uh, of course, I give consultation for uh, one of the banks in China. It's known as Zhongsheng Yinhang or Citic Bank. Uh, I, I actually cons uh, give a consultation for them. All right, so this is some of my interview. Uh, like for me, I'm interviewed in the uh, Yasuo Zhou Kan. All right, and uh, this is my most recent interview. Uh, like what I said, I'm a Singaporean. This is my interview in the Straits Time. 
our Singapore national, English national paper in Singapore that was on the 29th of September 2019, alright? So now, whatever I share this morning, uh, disclaimer as usual, uh, is only for information and education purpose only. It's not a recommendation to buy into any asset classes. So it's just for your information and hopefully after you hear me out, you can do your own analysis and come out with your own uh, analysis or decision whether to participate in that particular asset classes or not. So for me, uh, I have my own definition of uh, time frame. Uh, when I mention short term is anything less than one month, uh, anything from one month to less than one year is actually known as intermediate term. Long term is from one year to less than uh, 10 years. Ultra long term is 10 years or more. So do take note of uh, wherever I mention any uh, time duration. All right. So now for me, is uh, I do see a very big crisis uh, uh, happening right now. The last crisis that we had was in 2008, whereby we had the subprime crisis. So uh, almost 20, uh, 12 years has passed and we are into 2020. Actually, today is the uh, 17th day of the new year. All right. So what I see the biggest bubble is this thing called the bond bubble. All right. And uh, just to let everyone know, bond market is 10 times bigger than the global stock market. A lot of people just focus on the stock market, but we need to understand this. Bond market is 10 times bigger. So if this bomb bubble were to burst, the effect is going to be very devastating. Let me share you guys why. All right. What I foresee is this. We are going to have this thing called the sovereign debt crisis, which already started. It's going to get more serious. In fact, starting from this year, we are going to enter into the three most fearsome year of the sovereign debt crisis until 2022. So then what is sovereign debt? Sovereign debt is actually bonds issued by a nation government in a foreign currency and sold to foreign investors. Alright, so right now, uh, as we all know, since 2008, the subprime crisis, the central government uh, around the whole world, be it central bank, the European Central Bank, even BOJ Bank of Japan, they have printed a lot of money. So they have bought out a lot of bonds. And basically, uh, what I feel is this. Let's take a look over here. Uh, even the World Bank is warning of a global debt crisis, uh, following the fastest increase in borrowing since the 1970s. The government, uh, the central bank, or even the government, especially in Europe, Japan, and US, they are going onto a lot of debts. All right? This is something very scary. Let's take a look at some uh, figures. Let's take a look at last year. All right? So if we look at the light blue portion, that is actually the financial sector debt. The orange uh, portion is actually the general government debt and the dark blue portion is actually the private non-financial sector. As of the end of last year, the total global debt is on track to surpass US $255 trillion for the whole of last year. Also, that is very scary and it's been increasing, you can see, from 1999 until last year for the last 20 years. All right, and, uh, and that's why uh, so-called the uh, World Bank is very concerned that uh, and I'm very concerned as well. That's why I say we are having too much debt and uh, this uh, crisis is to deal with the bond crisis. So when this bond bubble burst is going to be devastating. Like what I say, ten, it is 10 times much bigger than the global stock market. All right. So On top of the sovereign debt crisis uh, or the bond crisis that I see, another crisis that I see right now is this uh, crisis called the repo crisis, which actually deal with the repo market. All right, if you understand, uh, since uh, September last year, Federal Reserve has been in, uh, in interventing in the repo market with billions of dollars. All right, a lot of people thought that this is actually QE4, but actually it's not. All right, it's actually not QE4. All right, why? Because actually, uh, US economy is doing fine and their unemployment rate as of uh, December is 3.5%. It has been the lowest for the past 50 years. So there is actually no need for so-called the Federal Reserve to do QE. So why are they uh, interfering in the repo market? It's because they are trying to suppress the short-term interest rate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I foresee is 
uh, for the coming few years, we are going to see interest rate increasing very, uh, increase very rapidly. So right now, Federal Reserve is seeing that, so they are trying to suppress the short-term interest rate, which is what they can control. They can't really control the long-term interest rate, they can only control the short-term. So they are trying to, uh, because we are having a liquidity crunch, so they are trying to pumping a lot of liquidity to suppress the so-called short-term interest rate. But the question is, how long can the Federal Reserve fight against a free market? All right, that's an important question. Also, what I foresee is for the next few years, we are going to see interest rate increasing very rapidly. I'm, this is based on, uh, because I do cycle analysis, I can do all this. I know what is coming next. Another phenomenon that I think is coming next will be the strong rally in the US dollar. All right? It will probably be very strong like what happened during the uh, so-called the Plaza Accord in 1985. But it was, the US dollar rally was so strong until uh, we had a G5 meeting over there, the five uh, major countries then. They, have, they decide to artificially uh, so-called devalue US dollar. So in a way, it caused yen to appreciate, and that's why it ended up, ended up with a lot of uh, capital flow flowed, uh, uh, flooding the Japanese stock market and the property market, and finally it caused a bubble in the Japanese uh, stock and as well as the property market in the 1989. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, this is something uh, very scary as well. So uh, because of this, I do see a rise in the interest rate and a rise in the US dollar. So do take note for those uh, companies or even countries whereby they all have a lot of uh, US de dollar denominated debt when interest rate goes up. When US dollar goes up, it's going to be a double whammy. Also do take note of this and this is something very scary and this is what I see is coming up next. All right. So now ladies and gentlemen, uh, another thing probably I can share with you guys is this. Apart from cycle analysis, this is something very important. This is what we call capital flow analysis. Why? Because please understand, even though I'm a Singaporean and probably you guys are watching this from Malaysia, Indonesia or other parts of the world, please understand that we are all connected or we cannot run away from each other. What happened in one contingent will actually impact others. All right. Uh, as you all know, central bank has been printing a lot of money. All right. So, but the thing is, money will not disappear they will only flow around, like fund manager, they will move the money around from probably uh, capital will flow domestically between investment sector, like from maybe bond market to currency to commodity to stock market, where the fund manager see that there's profit potential, then they will move the money around. And capital will flow internationally between countries and uh, regions. All right. So what I see is this, because of a sovereign debt crisis that's happening in Europe, which a lot of European countries government, they are, they are owning a lot of debts, for example, uh, uh, in Greece, or even in Japan. Japan's debt is about 260% of its GDP. This is something very scary. We haven't even talked about US. US national debt is about 23 trillion. All right, so this is, that's why I say, this bomb bubble, bubble is something very uh, scary. It's increasing day by day. The size is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when it finally one day when it bursts, I would say this is going to be something more serious than what happened in 2008 whereby we seen the subprime crisis. Alright, so what I see right now is there's going, there's a lot of money uh, flowing out from Europe and Japan whereby the sovereign debt crisis is imploding. So like what I say, money will not disappear. They, when they move out, where will they go? First, they will go into the world's deepest market that can accept these trillions of dollars, which is this, the US stock market. All right. So because I'm able to combine cycle analysis with capital flow analysis, so that's why four years ago, I can call that, hey, down zone is going to go up to 30,000. Why? Because of capital flow moving into a US stock market, because it is a place that can accept, that's deep enough uh, to accept trillions of dollars. Oh, that's why they move in and US stock market is continuing to go up. All right? And uh, just like uh, what I mentioned is, if you want to buy US stock, you need to convert your, probably your euro, your yen, your ringgit, or your Singapore dollar into US dollar. 
this will give another push to the US dollar. So that's why I say US dollar for the next maybe two or three years, we will see a very strong US dollar rally together with the rise in the interest rate. All right, so, so do take note of this. Uh, it's going to be a double whammy. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is something I just want to share with you guys. This is an indicator that I personally uh, invented myself. It's actually called the Relative Risk Index. Uh, I divided this uh, uh, into four different color zones, green, yellow, orange, red. So what does it mean? Let me give you an analogy, uh, like driving car. When we see green light, we will just step on the pedal, we will go. So uh, once the light turns to yellow or orange, that means we got to be prepared because uh, red light is coming. Also, we need to slow down when we see orange uh, light and finally, when we see red light, we will stop. This is uh, normally what we do when we drive. All right, so this RI, what does it tell us? It actually shows us the risk level of the US stock market, the risk level of the US stock market. It is not looking at the US dollar, not the commodity prices, not the, uh, the, the, the bond market. It is specifically, specifically looking at the US stock market. All right, and it stretched from 1999 until uh, this year, 2020. It's about a 20-year so-called uh, uh, range. So how did I come up with this uh, relative risk index? I actually combined uh, uh, 14 major cycle analysis, technical analysis, and uh, fundamental analysis indicator. Then within the 14 major indicators, within it, there are 47 sub-indicators like the, let's say, example, the 10-year minus 3-month uh, uh, U, this is one of it, or the housing numbers. All right, so is I combine all this and I presented it in a very easy-to-understand manner, which is this line over here. It shows the risk level of the U.S. stock market. Like right now, we are actually over here. Uh, that means we are quite close to the upper end of the orange zone, all right, we are not in the red zone yet, but we are at the towards the upper end of the orange zone. That means what? That means the risk level of the US stock market is at a relatively high risk level. All right, so that's why for me is uh, since three years ago I've been talking about down zone thirty thousand. I still feel that it's coming, and for me, I I based on the analysis that I do, I think down zone is going to go beyond thirty thousand. Oh, 30,000 to me is a given. Uh. Four years ago, I can really see it already. So, but it's how high above 30,000 that uh, that is the more important uh, question right now. All right, so, uh, but on the way to 30,000 or even 30,000 and beyond, ladies and gentlemen, probably we will see uh, what happened to, towards the end of uh, 2018, a uh, 20% correction. All right. Along the way, on the way up to 30,000 and beyond, we will probably see some uh, deep correction, like what happened towards the end of 2018. All right? So when I so-called place, uh, this is down zone, a uh, 20-year view against my RRI. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look. Huh? Even though there was a 20% correction in end of 2018, uh, my RRI, yes, uh, it was at the orange zone, but it did not plunge. But let's look over here. Remember 2008, the global financial crisis, down zone collapsed about 50%. Can you see as it, when it reached a 20%, because in the financial market, a lot of analysts, they define bear market as 20% drop. So even drop, it dropped 20%, but can you see, after it dropped 20%, why did it continue to drop? Because can you see my RRI continue to collapse? All right. So that's why towards the end of 2018, even though it dropped 20%, I say as long as my RI did not plunge like what happened here, hold on tight. That means we are not going into a bear market yet. All right. Same thing. You see, from it dropped 20%, but it, after that it dropped 30, 40, even 50. Why? Because you can see my RI collapse. But for this case, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my RI didn't collapse here like what happened here and here. That's why during that period, even though a lot of analysts or economists call for a stop 
or the, the start of a bear market, I say no, we are not going into a bear market yet. So along the way, what I can say is even though US stock market, let's say down zone, continue to go up, or, or even along the way, you have a 20% correction. As long as we don't, we don't see my RI plunge like this and like this, then that means, ladies and gentlemen, hold on tight because this bull market probably will go, still go some way up. But along the way, you will probably see deep correction along the way, like what happened uh, during what we saw during the last quarter of 2018. All right. So anyway, this RI is my proprietary uh, tool. Uh, it's only available to my timing and you community. All right. And so, uh, so do take note of this. All right. So like what I say, I'm very confident this will hit. Like it's just a matter of when, which I think probably it should be uh, this year because we are only about 700 points away only. All right. So now this is about stock market. And what I really see the very uh, devastating is this uh, monetary crisis, which I'm going to I forecast is going to happen around 2021 to 2022. That means from now until 2021, 2022, we'll see US dollar rally very strongly together with the interest rate. Until finally around 2021, 2022, we'll see a uh, monetary crisis uh, broke out, um, a breakout, uh, whereby US dollar will not be the world reserve currency anymore. Most likely, you'll be replaced by a basket of uh, currency, including uh, US dollar, euro, yen, maybe renminbi, or even gold inside, rather than US dollar being the pre uh, a predominant uh, currency. Uh, this is what I see based on the, uh, I actually have this seven year sabbatical cycle. So the last turn was 21.5. So th the next turn that I see will be around 2022. All right. It's a seven year cycle. All right. So uh, this is what I can share. Uh, 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 over here is, uh, I do see US market continue to go up. Uh, down zone 30,000. Uh, then US dollar will continue to go up interest rate will continue to go up and uh, US dollar do take note probably is going to go up uh, very strongly till 2021 to 2022 around that period alright so uh, for you guys who find that my sharing is uh, interesting or beneficial you can follow me in Facebook uh, you can just uh, key in Derek Tan D-E-R-I-C-K-T-A-N my symbol my profile picture is actually this I'm so confident about uh, down zone hitting 30,000. I even made a cap four years ago, all right, to conglomerate this, all right. So you can uh, find me in my Facebook, or if not, you can like my uh, Derek Tan page, all right. And uh, same thing, you can uh, find this cap over here, all right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have benefited from my sharing today. And uh, Chinese New Year is coming. I wish everyone a happy Chinese New Year and may the timing review. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.